Welcome to the Smart Business Revolution. 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 Do you want a revolution? Yeah. You say you want a revolution. Revolution. The revolution. It's going on right now. Welcome to The Revolution, the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where we ask today's most successful entrepreneurs to share the tools and strategies they use to build relationships and connections to grow their revenue. Now, now, your host for The Revolution, John Corcoran. Hey, everybody, John Corcoran here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where I talk with CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs of companies like Netflix, Activation Blizzard, LendingTree, OpenTable, Axe Software, and many, many more. Also talk to the leaders at organizations like YPO, EO, and many other business-focused organizations. I'm also the co-founder of Rise25, where we help connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects. And we're doing a live episode today with just me. I'm flying solo. My business partner, Jeremy, has a conflict, so he couldn't make it here today. But we're going to be talking about how to create a consistent content schedule and stick to it. And that is one of the hardest things for so many businesses to do. They know that they need to do it. And yet the question is how to do it. And so after 11 years of of uh, being fairly consistent, a little rocky in the first couple of years, eventually figuring out a system. I'm going to share the system that works for me, works for us, and how you can save time and generate leads and referrals and strategic partnerships and all that kind of stuff uh, using a content, consistent content schedule. Um, and first, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media. At Rise25 Media, we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. I have been so amazingly um, benefited from doing a podcast. Uh, for, for 11 years, I've told everyone I ever met, you should do a podcast. If for no other reason, then you will meet amazing people. You will connect with amazing people. It's a great source of clients, referral partners. You're learning constantly. You're uploading your network. So many great benefits. So I highly recommend it. If you want to learn more, go to rise25media.com or you can email us at support at rise25media.com. All right. So let's dive into this topic. And um, Ryan Howard, great to see you here. Glad that you're here again and uh, a bunch of others coming in. So first, let's talk about why create content? Why is that even important? Is that important? Um, there's a number of reasons why content is important. It's content is the new, uh, what do you call it? The, the new uh, formula or fuel that powers the modern economy. And if you're not creating content, you're just simply not going to be found. Um, you know, Google, of course, loves fresh content. It's said so many times before. If you're not generating face co fresh content, then you're going to be missing out in terms of people, frankly, finding you. And it's also a great way for clients to get to know you by you sharing your philosophy, your approaches, your strategies. It's a great way to position yourself as an expert by generating that content, putting it out there in the world. Think about so many people that you probably read, whether it's authors, speakers, thought leaders, they're probably generating content right now. Um, it's going to save you time if you do it right. And we're going to dive into how exactly that works. And then also just great SEO value by having a lot of content out there that is driving people back to find you. So let's talk about the different options for creating consistent content because it's not enough to just write one blog post wait three years, write another one, right? That's what a lot of people do. Um, and I've been get certainly guilty of that. So option number one is do nothing. So just don't create any content as well. That's what a lot of people do. But you know, for the reasons that I just mentioned and others that it's important, that it's valuable. There's value actually doing it. So I don't think doing nothing is a great option. I would argue that you certainly should not do that. Uh, so then what's another option in order to create consistent content? Well, you know, every website, almost every website has a blog component. Many business uh, websites have one. So let's talk about that. You know, I find these days most people know they have a blog and they feel like they should be writing, but they're not doing it because they're busy with different things. So you could outsource it. That could work for you if you have the resources to pay for that. But it's hard for them to capture a voice, hard for them to create content that is going to be reflective of the way that you think. 
the way that you strategize, the knowledge that you have. So the question is, do you write them yourself? You know, you're busy, you got a lot of things going on. Um, and also just frankly, creating a blog, updating a blog, it's no longer the hot thing anymore. It was hot 10 years or, or so ago. There's many other channels that you can tap into. So what I'm a big fan of, and it took me a long time to get around to this since I naturally um, identify as a writer. Uh, you know, I started my career as a writer in uh, presidential letters and messages in the White House in the Clinton years. I was a speechwriter for a governor of California, written for Forbes and Huffington Post and Entrepreneur and all kinds of different publications. And so that's always been how I identify. But I realized that talking out your content, that is what I'm doing right now, speaking it out is a lot more effective because uh, you can get a lot more done and you can also use it as a tool for networking. So this is a very rare, the irony here is very rare that I'm doing a solo episode. I can't remember the last time I did a solo episode. It's been years now. So, and even today I was struggling over doing it. Um, so most of the time there's someone on the other end, whether it's my business partner, Jeremy, or someone else. And so it, that's really the, the biggest lesson that I want to share is that your content is an opportunity for networking. It's an opportunity for you to connect with someone else, build a relationship with them, feature them, highlight some of their expertise, have a great conversation. And it's also a tool for business development because that person, if you've chosen them right, there could be opportunities to work with them. And I look back at my past guest lists, and at times it's virtually indistinguishable from my list of clients and referral partners and strategic partners, um, but also people that we refer business to or that we have hired for various different services because it gives you an opportunity to get to know them. And you might find that they're someone that you want to hire. So, you know, when you talk out your client, when you talk out your content um, and you generate uh, content that is uh, then become turns into video, audio, written. You can then take it and turn it into written content. Then it's the benefits are amazing. Networking, business development. It takes a heck of a lot less time. You know, when I was trying to create blog posts at the end of a year, I'd be lucky if I put out a half dozen to a dozen. Uh, so oftentimes it's just a lot faster to talk it out. Um, you're building relationships with people, you're generating content. It's personal and professional development, especially when you have someone on the other end of the line who you're talking to and you're learning from them and you're getting to ask the questions that you're curious about, that you want to know about regarding their area of expertise. I am, you know, I, I put out two episodes a week now for the first many years I did one per week. So, you know, think about it once a week, you're talking to some intelligent person who maybe they're the dominant expert in their field, and maybe they've written books on the topic, and it's your opportunity to ask them questions about what you're curious about. And oftentimes that can be really beneficial for you and for your business. So then, and then the final question is, where do you put it? What do you do with that content when you're done? How do you put it out into the world? Now, I'm obviously a huge fan of publishing content in a podcast. You can also take it, uh, take the video portion, and you can put it onto YouTube, which is the number two or three largest search engine in the world. So you should be generating content on there as well. You can also take that content and cut it up and make little micro content that you share on social media which just gets you even more exposure. Um, but the reason that I really like the structure of podcasting is because, you know, some people come to us and they ask, you know, I'm thinking about doing a podcast or I'm thinking about doing a YouTube channel or I'm thinking about, I don't know, setting up an Instagram channel or something like that. The problem with those two latter solutions is they, all your eggs are in one basket with one large tech media company who controls the rules of the road. And if they change the rules of the road, you have, there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas with a podcast, you control your destiny. You own your land, so to speak. You have a feed that then can be fed out to multiple different locations. So rather than you being on rented land, you're on, you own your own land. And so it's better to, to build under that 
structure, not to get wonky, but that's, that's a much better structure for you. So the bottom line is you talk out your content, you're building great relationships with people. You are learning. It's personal and professional development. It's business development. It's great. I haven't even mentioned this yet. Great referral marketing because then you have license to ask people, you know, who else should I feature on my show? Who else do you know that would be a great fit? You were wonderful. I'd love people just like you. People oftentimes they know others who are just like them. And so you can get great introductions to other great prospects for the purposes of profiling and featuring them, featuring them on your show. And um, then you take that content that you've created and um, you know, you, I'm a big believer also that you shouldn't be the one doing it, that you should have a good competent team that's going to handle the pieces. That's going to be up to speed on all the emerging new platforms that are coming down because there are new platforms emerging all the time. Amazon's gone, gone big into podcasting. So changes are happening all the time and you shouldn't be abreast of that. And that's also, frankly, not the fun stuff. It's not the highest and best use of your time. The highest, best use of your time, especially if you are a business owner, is you should be uh, using the podcast to have great conversations with great people who oftentimes you wouldn't even otherwise have a chance to talk to them. So you do that and then you turn it into a podcast. You push it across multiple different channels. You push it across onto social media. And that's, that's the formula. And what's wonderful is it also has that discipline built into it. Because once you get those interviews scheduled, there's someone else involved. There's someone else going to be other on the line. They're depending on you. And so I love that external pressure of scheduling uh, interviews with other people. And I know I'm going to show up for them. I'm much more likely to than even, you know, a solo recording, which is something you can easily push off, you know, when you get busy with other stuff. So that's the basic overview. If you have any questions about this, feel free to email me, john at rise25media.com or our main email address that is monitored throughout the day by multiple team members, support at Rise25 Media. If you have any questions, shoot us an email there or connect with me on LinkedIn. And hopefully this was valuable to you all. All right, take care. Thank you for listening to the Smart Business Revolution podcast with John Corcoran. Find out more at smartbusinessrevolution.com. And while you're there, sign up for our email list and join the revolution. 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 And be listening for the next episode of the Smart Business Revolution podcast.